Hey folks, time for another Q&A. Uh, it's going to start with a little bit of house cleaning, a little bit of good news. Um, been getting trolls the entire time I've been on YouTube, but I can say honestly recently, not only is there a reduction in number, which uh, I hope all observers are happy about, but um, they're actually, they actually seem to be getting worse. So like for example, in yesterday's Q&A, um, it was pretty obvious my lips were chapped and I was wearing chapstick, but I got a whole bunch of like, is he wearing lipstick type stuff? And, you know, to you trolls, I realize that you are Neanderthals whose parents were also first cousins, but uh, you can do better than that. Anyway, let's jump right into this here. Um, is there a difference between the earth being between the current sheet and the sun and the earth being on the opposite side and the sun being between the current sheet and earth? And the answer to that is no. Um, the current sheet is already here. It's been here. It's why earth is changing and all the other planets are changing. It's why interplanetary space is changing and it's why the sun is changing. It has engulfed the solar system already. And uh, at the end of the day, the risk will be coming from the sun, not the current sheet. That's that's going to be the, the the big pound right there. Um, I get this question a lot. What is the time from micronova to crustal displacement when the crust and, uh, you know, when things start to turn and the tsunami start to happen? And that happens all together. It's the micronova energy itself that actually unlocks the crust from the mantle. And to be honest, it, the moment it gets unlocked, all of the things that are going to cause the shift are already there. They're there right now. It's just that the crust is locked. So the moment it gets unlocked, that's when the shift begins. And the moment the shift begins, it's inertia taking over in terms of the ocean. And that stuff begins right away as well. Um, people have been asking more recently about lake sloshing. I talk about the oceans a lot, but what about lakes? I have addressed this before and happy to do it again. Yes, the lakes count as water too. Um, so if you're a thousand miles away from the ocean, but you live, you know, on a house right by the lake where literally you could throw a penny down at your little dock there. Um, yeah, it's the same situation. Now, granted, it's not going to be as big as, uh, the whole ocean and those effects, but yes, the lakes are going to slosh around as well. That's, that's definitely a thing. Um, question about atmospheric loss due to the micronova, I would say almost certainly although not to the point where the entire Earth's atmosphere is stripped away. There's no evidence of that happening in the past. And that actually self-corrects. Um, and the reason why that self-corrects, even if a big patch of the atmosphere is stripped away, is because Earth will outgas. Now, granted, a lot of that's going to be coming from volcanoes, but you might not realize this, but there's a constant air exchange between the ground and the earth, uh, and, and the atmosphere anyway. And so when we, if we have a depressurization or a loss of pressure, that's going to pull the gases up out of the rock, up out of the soil, other things like that. And it should, uh, in theory, rectify itself pretty quickly. And not just in theory, but that's what all the evidence sort of says is going to happen anyway. The world does come back. Uh, the way I've been and it comes back pretty quickly. The way I've put it on some of the phone calls, some of the one-on-one -on -one calls that I've been doing with you observers is that this event is like the last minute of the Super Bowl and it's a tie game. Yeah, your heart's gonna hit your feet a hundred times in that last minute. But then the whistle blows and everybody saunters out into the middle of the field. Uh, they shake hands, they give hugs, there's a trophy celebration. Someone says we're going to Disneyland. Um, Evidence suggests that as terrible as this thing is, the world does come back pretty quickly, and uh, that would go for the atmospheric pressurization as well. Uh, people have been asking for an update on the Big Burp, the EMP disaster vehicle. Uh, the only update I have at this moment is that we ran into a little string of bad luck. Basically, we had a two-month wait for the critical part we needed to actually arrive to us. Thank you, supply chain. Uh, and during that two months, we kind of lost our place in line. You know, Rocky can't do everything with this. We did need uh, a shop to help us with, with this particular portion of the project. And in that two months, we lost our place in line. They couldn't, they can't just keep the burb in one of the bays that they use to make money. And so um, we got pushed another month and a half that way, and we're approaching the two month mark on the push, but we are on the schedule. Um, whenever they finish the project that they're working on there, you know, and there's a space open, we're gonna get back in there. And so, yeah, it's been rough waiting these almost four months 
to really make any significant progress, but supply chain and then you know, we have to be understanding about the shop. They, uh, you know, they're, they're day to day, week to week, they need to be doing work. They can't just sit around waiting. And so that's, that's basically where we are with the big bird. Last question we'll get to today is land rising and sinking. Why and where? Well, first of all, uh, the why is because the electric current that is going to be induced uh, by the Micronova is going to cause serious mantle heaving. There's an unfathomable amount of iron in there. The global electric circuit's gonna be working over time um, and that's going to be moving things around. Plus when the crust goes like this, it doesn't just you know slide like an ice skater does on ice. There's inhomogeneity to the bottom of the crust. Things are gonna be pushed down, um, you know, pulled up, et cetera, things like that. And so when you think about it from that perspective, it should be kind of clear why there's mantle heaving. In terms of the where, um, there's going to be some places that can't be predicted, both rising and falling. Um, I do know that one of, um, there are some places that are a little bit easier to guess about. The East African Rift really scares the, the bejesus out of me. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near there. I think you're going to have some serious land falling around that area. Um, around New Zealand, Australia, and the greater Oceania area, I think there's a good chance for land rise potential there. Um, that's bad news and good news. Uh, it's bad news in the short term. That means that the waves would probably be even worse as the land displaces the water. But it's also not with, uh, out of the realm of possibility that after it's all said and done, you could walk from New Zealand to Australia if you had the time and the shoes. Um, but basically, for, for other parts of the world, it is largely a crapshoot. The one thing you can use is if you know where the water is going to be going from the ocean, isostatic readjustment is still a thing. The fact that ice has been melting in the polar regions and that area is kind of lifting while other places uh, around it are falling, this is happening on the east coast of the United States, that's still a real geological thing. Uh, you can't just throw all of geology out the window. And so, for example, if you take the Gulf of Mexico coming into the United States, there's, uh, you know, coming northward into the Gulf states, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, things like that, that extra weight should push that land down. And to the north of that, the Dakotas, Canada, you know, central Canada, that might lift up a little bit. But other than that, um, and, you know, the East African Rift and other things, uh, that I mentioned. It is largely a guessing game there, but you can make some educated guesses based on isostatic uh, readjustment if you know where that water and extra weight is going to be going and displacing. And similarly, as the water leaves the Gulf of Mexico, we should probably see a little bit of a rise there. Um, not that any of you live in the Gulf of Mexico at this point, or at least I, I hope you don't live at the bottom of, of a Gulf of Mexico. Um, I guess while I'm talking about that, some of the volcanoes that are actually there in the Gulf of Mexico, including a tar volcano or asphalt volcano, however you want to describe it, uh, that one should probably go off pretty bad when that happens. Uh, a lot of the pressure holding that down is going to be gone and there's going to be, uh, and there's still all that pressure from below, not to mention everything else that's affecting the mantle. So um, that's where we're going to leave it for today. Um, Trolls, hope you have a wonderful day. Heal your traumas. Um, other than that, I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.